I'm here with polymer clay expert Cindy Holt, and Cindy has a great technique to make this beautiful necklace that I'm wearing. I love it. I know that's it's. I told you it's going home with you because Aww. that just suits you so well. Well, the texture is wonderful, and it's so lightweight. It looks like it would be big and heavy, but it's not. Well, that's because I use ultralight as the core of the bead, and. It's one of those things that when my son comes out to visit with me, he likes to roll these beads for me. And I take the clay and I roll it through the pasta machine on the widest setting here so that I have a nice uniform piece of clay. And then in order to get the same volume to make the beads the same size, I use a cutter. And it doesn't matter what the shape or size of your cutter is, as long as you use the same amount for each one. For these beads, I know I use about four pieces in there. And the ultralight, you kind of push it together a little bit and then just roll. And then you just roll it mm -hmm. up. And so you could use a larger circle cutter sure, or smaller. Sure, and just sure. You, that way you get the mm -hmm. consistency. And when you're doing a gradated size necklace like that, you can start with your largest bead, maybe seven of these, and then go to six and the five and to four, right. and you get your different get your size pattern. beads. Then when I have all the beads ready, I bake them. And I have them here in this coil because I use my larger cutters, I call them my bead corrals. That is such a great tip. Yeah, when you're making all your little small round beads, your filler beads and things, that keeps them corralled in the oven so that you're, you don't have beads rolling all over the oven, which I've done. Right, and of course, following the manufacturer's instructions for baking. Absolutely. So once my son rolls all these for me, I bake them up and I keep them in a little baggie. So if I come up with some interesting textured clay, I can use it for this. This is my favorite texture stamp. I use it for everything. Oh, it's such a good texture mm -hmm. too. And when I have a large stamp like this, normally what I do is I put the sheet of clay on the stamp, put it face down on a sheet of paper, and put it on my floor and step on it. Because then you get a nice even pressure. Absolutely. So once I have my clay textured, I just take it and I'm gonna take one of my baked beads here. We'll do the big one, okay? And I just tear off sheets. And you can use any type of polymer clay for the textured part, right? Absolutely. I love this metallic color, it's really pretty. Oh, I love the metallics. And you just collage them on. Now you, you wanna press it a little bit to make it stick to the baked clay. So this is a good scrap project too, really. Oh yeah, yeah, that's why I have the beads always handy. And Once I you have your helper too. I know. <laughs> well, you know, you have people that come over and they're not necessarily crafty, but they want to get involved. This sure. is a great thing that they can do oh, yeah, for you or to keep your it. kids involved in your craft. Yeah. Then I bake these. Okay. Once they're baked, I like to put an antiquing on them. You can see the difference in what the antique oh, does really with the texture. It really brings out, yes. Absolutely. And I use just a, a craft paint to do this, an acrylic paint. This is my favorite. This is a wrought iron color. It's a gray green. Gives it a really nice patinaed look. It does. And my son, who is a master model painter, has taught me to always use two different colors. So I have like a dark mud brown on here too. And you just sort of blot it on. Make sure you get it down into all those deep crevices of your texture. Once you have it there, just take a damp paper towel and wipe it just a little bit so that it stays into the textures like that. Isn't that neat? Yes, it is, and it, it just, really highlights it. It really does, it really enhances the texture. And once that is dry, I like to go back, he's also taught me to add your highlights back on. So I take my metallic stamp pad, and you can literally just wipe it across the pad if you want to. Oh, it really brings it up, and especially mm -hmm. when you're using those metallic clays, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that you were highlighting. Yeah. And it's a very subtle, especially on the metallic clays, to do this. You can use your finger to apply it, or you can just take it, just rub it across there, and you can see it adds those beautiful highlights. So pretty. Now, how do you make a hole? I use a Dremel at home to drill through these. The ultralight clay is very light texture. It's very easy to go through, so you could actually use your hand drill and go right through these, too. Okay, perfect. Yeah. This is great. Well, let's take a look at the necklace that you made. So this is the graduated pattern that you're talking about mm -hmm. with the smaller beads at the mm -hmm. back. That makes it nice to wear, too. Yeah, yeah. And so I started with about eight or nine uh, cuts of my cutter to do the center bead and then just made smaller and smaller amounts after that. And what about this one? This has a real, this looks like you dug this up. Yeah, that's got <laughs> silver clay on it way. doing the same type of patterning. I don't think I used my stamp on that one. I think I actually use a piece of rough stand, sandpaper to do that. Oh, to create the texture. Mm -hmm. Smart, mm -hmm. and I love the wire work too. Mm -hmm. And what about the other one? So pretty, and that really, you're creating texture with the color and with the wire, so right. such a You could idea. use alcohol inks to do that, or you could even use um, colored markers. And you didn't seal any of these pieces, no. right? No. And they're gonna burnish a little bit with wear. I love that part. Me too. Yeah. All right, well thank you so much. This is a great project, Cindy. Sure.